Everyone says Islam is a religion of peace, all authorities in the Western world. And yet, all over the world, we see Muslims committing violence and justifying it by reference to Islamic texts. How are we to understand this? In the first place, we have to distinguish between Islam and Muslims. There's a great deal of confusion on this point. People think that because they know a Muslim who's a nice guy, that Islam must teach peace. In fact, the teachings of any particular religion are one thing, and the way each individual puts those teachings into practice is quite another. There's a spectrum of belief, knowledge, and fervor among the adherents of all religions. Some are very devout and knowledgeable about their religion's teachings. Others are devout, but less knowledgeable. Others are knowledgeable, but not devout, and so on. So one cannot assume that just because a particular Muslim is a good person, that Islam does not teach warfare against and subjugation of unbelievers. Unfortunately, it does. Islamic jihadis are very clear about this, always grounding their actions in the Quran, the holy book of Islam, and the example of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Abdullah Azam, the co-founder of Al-Qaeda, explained that Muhammad, he said, was a master of the Mujahideen, the warriors of jihad, and a model for fortunate, inexperienced people. The total number of military excursions which he accompanied was 27. He himself fought in nine of these, and then Azam named some of the major battles in Islamic history, Badr, Uhud, Amaraisi, the Trench, Qurayza, Kaibar, the conquest of Mecca, Hunayn, and Taif. He said Muhammad was on all of these expeditions. And he said this means that the Messenger of Allah used to go out on military expeditions or send out an army at least every two months. And the Egyptian Islamic scholar Nasser Hamid Abu Zaid said, if we follow the rules of interpretation, developed from the classical science of Quranic interpretation, it is not possible to condemn terrorism in religious terms. It remains completely true to the classical rules in its evolution of sanctity for its own justification. This is where the secret, he said, of its theological strength lies. One finds the same thing when one turns to the authoritative sources in Sunni Islam, the schools of Sunni jurisprudence, or madhadhib, the Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanafi, and Hanbali, these are not brick-and-mortar schools, but schools of thought, schools of law, with each prevailing in various regions of the Islamic world and most Muslims adhering to one or the other. A manual of Islamic law of the Shafi'i school was certified in 1991 by the clerics at Al-Azhar University, one of the leading authorities in the Islamic world, and where Barack Obama spoke in 2009, they certified this book as a reliable guide to Sunni orthodoxy, and Sunnis are 85 to 90 percent of Muslims worldwide. This manual of Islamic law stipulates about jihad that the caliph makes war upon Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians until they become Muslim or pay the non-Muslim poll tax. It adds a comment by Sheikh Nuh Ali Salman, a Jordanian expert on Islamic jurisprudence. The caliph wages this war only provided that he has first invited Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians to enter Islam in faith and practice, and if they will not, then invited them to enter the social order of Islam by paying the non-Muslim poll tax, jizya, which is specified in the Quran and is a sign of the subjugation of the non-believers while remaining in their ancestral religions. Without a caliphate, only defensive jihad is allowed. The goal of defensive jihad, however, is not peaceful coexistence with non-Muslims as equals. This same manual of Islamic law specifies that the warfare against non-Muslims must continue until the final descent of Jesus. That's Jesus the Muslim prophet, not Jesus the Savior. After that, nothing but Islam will be accepted from them, for taking the poll tax is only effective until, until Jesus' descent. That is, until Jesus the Muslim prophet returns, the Christians may live subjugated under the rule of Islamic law, but when he returns, it's convert to Islam or die. That warfare against unbelievers is being pursued all over the world today.